have to tell you, we have just had a remarkable communication from the president's top lawyer. Now, the president's top lawyer on Russia matters had been Mark Kazowitz, a New York lawyer who had represented the president previously on things like the Trump University fraud case and keeping Mr. Trump's divorce records secret. Um, one of the many, many things that happened in today's news concerning the president is that Mark Kazowitz was either demoted from his lead role on the president's legal team or he has left that legal team altogether. It's not entirely clear which. But in Mr. Kazowitz's place, now apparently leading the president's representation on matters related to Russia, is John Dowd, a Washington, D.C. lawyer who is, uh, like Mr. Kazowitz, also known for having a hot temper. Now, um, you might remember last night on this show, we had Bloomberg News reporter, investigative reporter Greg Farrell here. Uh, Greg Farrell and a colleague yesterday reported for Bloomberg uh, this seemingly very important story. See the headline there. Mueller expands probe to Trump business transactions. The reason I say this was a seemingly very important story is in part because of the freakout it seems to have occasioned in the White House. Um, that Bloomberg article came out yesterday mid-morning. It was updated a couple times during the day, but it initially came out mid-morning yesterday. By the time we were on the air last night, these were the stories that were breaking in the Washington Post and in the New York Times about the president considering his pardon powers, having his legal team discuss who he's allowed to pardon, including considering the question of whether he's allowed to pardon himself, and the White House trying to cook up ways to discredit Robert Mueller, the special counsel's investigation, giving clear indication that the White House is now basically trying to find a way to fire the special counsel. And to that end, they're trying to cook up ways that they would be able to justify that firing if and when they do it. Those stories broke last night while we were on the air. Now, what led to that incredible turn in the news? What led to the president to consider those radical options in that news that was broken last night? What were the things that happened that, that drove the president to start considering these options that you would consider a president to do only as his very last resort? What pushed him to that point? Well, according to the reporting from the Washington Post last night, quote, the president is irritated by the notion that Bob Mueller's probe could reach into his family's finances. Quote, his primary frustration centers on the prospect that the Mueller investigation could spread into scrutinizing many years of Trump deal-making. Quote, the president told top aides he was especially disturbed after learning Bob Mueller would be able to access several years of his tax returns. Quote, a close advisor to the president is quoted by the Post saying that the president's tax returns are outside Mueller's investigation. One of the president's lawyers, Jay Sekulow, uh, told the Post that the president's real estate transactions are, quote, far outside the scope of a legitimate investigation. All of that explanatory reporting and work done from the Washington Post Simultaneously, the New York Times reporting last night that Bob Mueller's inquiry evolving into an examination of Trump's financial history, quote, has stoked fears among the president's aides. So I say that Bloomberg story yesterday was really important, in part because what it seems to have occasioned. Bloomberg reports that the president's finances and his financial transactions and his business transactions are now being investigated. Also, the New York Times reporting within the last couple of days that Deutsche Bank, a boink, a, a bank, a boink, <laughs> Deutsche Bank, a bank that Trump has hundreds of millions of dollars in loans with, Deutsche Bank, is having its Trump transactions reviewed by banking regulators, and Deutsche Bank expects to be handing over their Trump-related records to Bob Mueller very soon. So you take all that together. What happens over the course of the last couple of days, and particularly with that Bloomberg story, is that it becomes clear that this thing is taking a turn into finances. They are following the money. It's about finances. It's about business transactions. And the response from the White House as of last night is that the White House is going nuclear, right? Pardons. Maybe the president pardoning himself. Maybe firing the attorney general, right? Prepping to fire the special counsel. Just nuclear. Like, break glass in case of emergency? They were smashing the glass last night. 
And so having sort of lived through that breaking news last night, wondering what occasioned that incredible turn, we decided to try to chase it down in a granular sense to figure out all we could about how the White House was explaining the president's new radicalism against the Russia probe. And there was one piece of the White House reaction um, that we thought would be fairly easy to chase up today. It was a very specific quote. It was from a named official, and it stuck out as kind of strange. It was from that initial Bloomberg News article, which said the Mueller investigation is shifting to look at Trump's business transactions. In that article, there is a quote from the man who is now, apparently, the president's top lawyer on Russia issues. It's from John Dowd. This is his John Dowd's quote to Bloomberg. Quote, those transactions, meaning Trump's business transactions, are, in my view, well beyond the mandate of the special counsel. They are unrelated to the election of 2016 or any alleged collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. And, most importantly, he says, they are well beyond any statute of limitations imposed by the U.S. Code. Who said anything about statutes of limitations? Why are you bringing that up? The statute of limitations for prosecuting what crimes exactly? What are we talking about here? This was a, this, I mean, the president's lawyer brought up the prospect that the president's business activities are crimes and they're beyond the statute of limitations. He brought that up apparently unprompted, which is unusual. So uh, it wasn't a blind quote, it had a name attached to it. So we contacted John Dowd today. We contacted the president's lawyer uh, today, actually tonight. Uh, to see what that meant, to see whether there was something in particular about the president's past business transactions that made him look up the statute of limitations for certain crimes. And Mr. Dowd took our call and he told us, quote, we have no evidence that any of these entities, meaning Trump business entities, we have no evidence that any of these entities are under investigation. He then told us, quote, I'm beginning to think it's not true. I'm beginning to wonder where the hell it came from. Uh, he then told our producer uh, that he would never speak to him again. Quoting, he told our producer, quote, this is the last call we'll ever have. I'm beginning to think it's not true. I'm beginning to wonder where the hell it came from. This is the last call we'll ever have. <laughs> Some days are weirder than others in this job, but you never really expect them to get that weird in conversation with the lead attorney for the President of the United States. But uh, we have had, uh, it's been a weird day. Um, and because it's Friday, um, we've had a bunch of breaking news tonight. We've had a flurry of news break just in the last couple of hours. If the President is going nuclear to try to stop the Russia investigation, to try to stop Robert Mueller's investigation. As you know, he basically has two paths to try to do that. The first path goes through the person that's now overseeing the Mueller investigation, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. If the president can't persuade Rod Rosenstein to fire Mueller, and it seems like he probably can't, then he could fire, he could order Rod Rosenstein to fire him, and then if Rod Rosenstein says no, he could fire Rod Rosenstein. And then he would get into the cycle where he just had to keep firing every other ranking person at the Justice Department from the top down until he found someone at some rank who would fire Bob Mueller. That is a hard path. That is potentially a long path. What became clear this week is that there is an easier and at least a, a shorter path for the president. The quicker way to do it would be for him to just put someone new, instead of Rod Rosenstein, in charge of overseeing the Mueller investigation. And the way you do that is just to kill Jeff Sessions, to proverbially, politically kill off Jeff Sessions. I mean, he may love Jeff Sessions, but if Jeff Sessions gets fired or quits as attorney general, Trump could appoint a new AG who would not be recused from the Russia investigation, who would not be recused from overseeing Mueller. And then that new attorney general, who he appointed to replace Jeff Sessions, could fire Bob Mueller. And then the White House would retroactively explain it with all this stuff they're trying to cook up to try to undermine Mueller's credibility. That scenario is what is looming now over the question of the future of the Russia investigation, the, the, the prospects of what the president might do to try to stop it. And that 
that coming into focus this week with the president turning on Jeff Sessions the way he did and everybody expecting Jeff Sessions to resign, that put this bombshell from the Washington Post tonight in a whole new light. Washington Post tonight breaking the news that on, on U.S. intelligence intercepts, the outgoing Russian ambassador to the United States, Sergei Kislyak, was heard telling Moscow, telling his superiors in Moscow, quote, that he discussed campaign-related matters, including policy issues important to Moscow, with Jeff Sessions during the 2016 presidential race. Now, initially, Jeff Sessions denied ever having any contacts with Russian officials during the campaign. He then later had to admit that, yes, he did have contacts with Russian officials during the campaign. That, that admission immediately preceded Jeff Sessions having to recuse himself from all campaign-related investigations, including the Russia one. But even when Jeff Sessions was admitting, was finally admitting that, yeah, okay, he had talked to Russians, even when he was admitting that, he was explicit in still denying what the Post has just reported. Let me be clear. I never had meetings with Russian operatives or Russian intermediaries about the Trump campaign. That was Attorney General Jeff Sessions in March, but the Washington Post reports tonight that Ambassador Sergei Kislyak's accounts of two conversations with Jeff Sessions, one in April and one in July, were intercepted by U.S. spy agencies. Uh, quoting a former official, the Post says, the intelligence indicates that Sessions and Kislyak, in fact, had substantive discussions on matters including Trump's positions on Russia-related issues and prospects for U.S.-Russia relations in a Trump administration. Now, it is entirely possible that the Russian ambassador was lying to his bosses at the Kremlin. And really, he and Jeff Sessions were only talking about like Candy Crush and gardening and the other stuff. It's so weird that they both love, right? But, but with Jeff Sessions all but being pushed out of the administration right now, right? With senior aides telling the New York Times they were stunned when Jeff Sessions didn't quit as attorney general yesterday morning after the president threw him under the bus on Wednesday night. I mean, this being the new front page story in the Washington Post tonight, newly raising the question of Sessions' own contacts with the Russians, newly raising questions about whether he further lied about his contacts with the Russians during the campaign, that is either the best timing for Sessions or the worst timing for Sessions. Because what the president is publicly complaining about when it comes to Jeff Sessions is that Sessions recused himself from overseeing the Russia investigation, which he shouldn't have done. The president didn't want him to do that. But this is exactly the reason <laughs> why Jeff Sessions so truly, really did have to recuse himself from the Russia investigation. So on the one hand, if you're on Attorney General Jeff Sessions' resignation watch, this looks like bad new damning information about Jeff Sessions. Maybe that'll push him to resign. On the other hand, if the reason he was going to resign is because the president was complaining about his recusal, this bad news about Jeff Sessions and his contacts with the Russians further bolsters the fact that Jeff Sessions did recuse himself from the Russia probe, as he should have. So... Attorney General Jeff Sessions has so far given no sign that he will resign. If he does resign, it would not be terribly surprising. And it could be a sign that the president is starting to move to try to shut down the Russia investigation under Robert Mueller, which will precipitate a, a major and presumably bipartisan crisis in this country. We do not know exactly what sparked the president's newfound sense of urgency on wanting the Russia investigation shut down. White House staffers and lawyers, as The Washington Post reported, um, have been indicating that it, it really it's the turn toward the president's finances and his business transaction and, and his taxes that has ratcheted this thing up to DEFCON 1 for him. That's just a no-go area for him. Shut this thing down now. Other longtime observers of the president have said even before this started happening that the thing to watch for with him, the sort of, I don't know if it's what the right metaphor is, his kryptonite, his Achilles heel, his, his red line, longtime observers of this president have said for a long time now that the other thing that might send him into panic mode in any kind of crisis, in any kind of confrontation, would be if anything from his life, from his political life, starts to affect his adult children in a negative way. There have been serious issues raised as to whether or not Jared Kushner, 
uh, has problems with his security clearance application. Whether or not Kushner not disclosing his own meetings with Russian officials on his security clearance application might open him to potential criminal prosecution. I should tell you that one of the prosecutors who's been brought on board the Mueller investigation recently secured a high-profile conviction for a DEA agent, a DEA agent who deliberately left things off his security clearance application. So Mueller's team is experienced in prosecuting people for leaving stuff off that form. And if there are problems with Jared Kushner's form, with his repeated non-disclosures, on his repeated refiling of that security clearance application form, any resulting liability that he faces because of that might also accrue to his wife, the president's daughter, Ivanka. Because the, the, the form, the SF-86 security clearance application form, the way it asks its questions, it asks about you or your family having contact with foreign nationals. It doesn't just ask about your own, it asks you or members of your family. And so unless Ivanka disclosed Jared's Russia meetings, while Jared didn't disclose his Russia meetings, Ivanka, the president's daughter, may also be in a pickle and potentially be open to prosecution on these matters. And if that really is just personality-wise and in terms of his values and in terms of what emotionally gets him, if that really is the kind of thing that would send the president into panic mode, that may be part of this as well. Well, now tonight, the Wall Street Journal was first to report that Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump have also had to refile and amend their financial filings because they left millions of dollars in dozens of assets off their initial filings. Now, two days ago on this show, we spoke with the outgoing head of the Office of Government Ethics, Walter Schaub, who resigned basically in frustration at the enormity of the ethical violations by the Trump administration and the Trump family. Walter Schaub warned us two nights ago that the president might try to do an end run around his office, basically, around uh, the person from that office who is next in line under Walter Schaub and who would be expected to take a lead ethics job in an acting capacity after Walter Schaub left. Schaub warned us two nights ago that the president might instead Instead of installing that person who's next in line, who really ought to have the job, he warned us that the president might instead go around that person who's next in line and instead pick somebody else out of the office. He warned us that the president might instead try to install a lower ranking ethics person from that office, a known person um, who's expected to be more lenient, be expected to be softer on the Trumps. Schaub warned about that two days ago, and today the president did, in fact, elevate that reputedly more lenient, more pliable ethics official to be acting head of that office. And that is the person who signed off on Jared's revised financial disclosure that got released today. And we've actually got one more piece of news about that that we're going to be breaking in a few minutes, which I think is important. Meanwhile, Jared Kushner has also, as of tonight, been scheduled for interviews with the Senate Intelligence Committee on Monday, and this is new, uh, with the House Intelligence Committee on Tuesday. So two days in a row, he'll be meeting with the staff of those intelligence committees behind closed doors, Monday and then Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we have just learned tonight, I told you it was a busy night. On Wednesday, remember how we're supposed to get live televised testimony on, uh, testimony on Wednesday from Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort? Not anymore. Senator Chuck Grassley, the chair of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate, now says that's not going to happen. He now says Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort will hand over documents and they'll speak with staff and they will talk to the committee at some point in the future, but not now. In the meantime, though, Chuck Grassley is going to hold an entirely different hearing on Wednesday. And he's tonight filed a subpoena to compel testimony from the head of the research firm that paid for the Christopher Steele dossier of alleged Russian dirt on Donald Trump. That dossier that caused such a stir when it was published by BuzzFeed in January. It has a lot of lurid stuff in it that is still unsubstantiated, but honestly, it also has a lot of stuff in it that has been borne out by subsequent serious investigation. This thing that's about to happen on Wednesday that just got scheduled tonight, this is the thing I have been saying was coming. This is the thing I've been saying was coming from congressional Republicans and from Republicans who want to defend Donald Trump. Senator Grassley has sent the subpoena tonight to the head of Fusion GPS. He has canceled the testimony from Don Jr. and Paul Manafort. And instead of hearing from them next week on the collusion issue, the Senate instead will play host at a big open televised hearing 
to the big Republican pushback theory that they have been gearing up with, gearing up for on conservative media uh, for a couple of weeks now. This is the big pushback in which they will claim that there is a Russian scandal, but it's not a Trump-Russia scandal, it's the Democrats. And the dossier on Trump, that's the real Russia scandal. That's from Russia, and the scandal is about Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. Um, it's, we have known this was coming. Now, as of tonight, we know it is arriving Wednesday morning in the Senate. Uh, and the first subpoena has just gone out for that. So that's all happened tonight. That's all been reported tonight and also um, the White House spokesman Sean Spicer resigned today and Anthony Scaramucci was hired as White House communications director and there are many rumors that the chief of staff, Reince Priebus, is going to be next to go and his former deputy chief of staff, Katie Walsh, who already left the White House today, she went back to the RNC and the spokesman for the president's Russia legal team resigned and the man who had been the top lawyer on the president's Russia legal team was apparently replaced and the guy who replaced him and is the new top lawyer on the Russia legal team just told us he doesn't believe that Trump's business dealings or financial transactions are actually being investigated and then he told us, this is the last call we will ever have. And it was super weird. So, <laughs> happy Friday. Things are weird and a lot is happening. And mostly I have questions. And tonight we have structured the rest of this hour, the rest of the show, to try to get me and get us some answers to those questions. So stay with us tonight. It's a lot, I know, but this is important stuff. This is an important time. Stay right there. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.